Rangers needed a victory on Sunday. But Celtic wanted it. And, ultimately, the greater desire of Brendan Rodgers' players was the deciding factor. What a famous victory this was for the champions. Purely because of how deep they had to dig to win at Ibrox with 10 men. If ever there was any question over the character, mentality and confidence of that group of players, they've now been resoundingly answered. Rodgers wouldn't claim his side were at their free-flowing best yesterday. Yet they demonstrated there are different ways to win a game. Doing the nasty stuff, standing up strong and fighting through adversity is one of them and that's primarily what saw them come out on top. It's what makes champions. Rangers just couldn't come up with the right answers. Celtic knew they were in for a real game within three minutes. To go behind like that so early through to Drake Boyata's awful mistake forced them to regroup. Tom Rodgick then equalised with a brilliant goal. Then they lost another soft one and had to regroup again. Mosa Dembele equalised but Jozo Simonovic got sent off and Celtic's reserves of character were tested again. For over 30 minutes Rangers had an extra man on the park. Why on earth did they not make that advantage count? If anything, the red card proved to be to Celtic's advantage. By bringing on Odson Edward, Rodgers changed the dynamics of the team and played a little bit deeper. That asked questions of Rangers' football brain. Celtic were saying, can you break us down with good play rather than us giving you the opportunity to run in behind us? Rangers had no answers. They were slinging balls in the box with hope. That's the beauty of football. Everyone wants their team to attack. But the fact is Celtic looked defensively more solid sitting back with 10 men rather than playing their natural game with 11. That's troubling for Graham Morty. He couldn't have wished for a better start. There was always a risk in Rodgers throwing Boyata back into the deep end after timeout injured. But what is he thinking about? He tried to be cute and clever. In the first three minutes in a game of this magnitude, it was schoolboy stuff. If you haven't played for a while, you tell yourself to keep it simple. He'll have done it yet forgotten when he crossed the line. It didn't kick him into gear. He was pushed over too easily at the second goal and gifted Alfredo Morelos a chance to make it 3-2. But the fact is Celtic still won. And he'll be a stronger and better player for the experience. What a day for it was for Celtic's central defenders. You want to show your physicality in these games but Simonovic was just too aggressive with his arm. He clearly caught Morelos in the face and being so close to an official made the sending off easy. His lack of protest said it all. We hadn't even played an hour at that point. Celtic ought to have been there for the taking but they looked more dangerous on the counter-attack with Dembele trying to play Edward in. Dembele looked close to his best again. You've got to give a lot of credit to Scott Brown at the second equaliser. Just before he hits the long pass it he looked up to try and find Dembele. It was a dreadful goal for Rangers to lose. Bruno Alves was badly positioned. Again, Fabio Cardozo is a guy who's not played a lot of football showing signs of rustiness. If David Bates was on the field I don't think that would have happened. It was a sublime finish from a guy who, for 40 minutes, had hardly touched the ball. He didn't lose his head. His goal and assist yesterday suggested he's pretty close to being back to the player of old. He just needed a run in the team. What a day Edward had, as well. He'd a huge impact when he came on against Morton last week and the same happened here. I wouldn't say he and Dembele have yet got a great understanding but there are certainly signs they can work on it and be formidable. Would Celtic pay the £7 million for Edward now? It's still mostly potential, isn't it? He's still not played a massive amount of football and that's a load of money for Celtic. After his goal, Celtic looked pretty comfortable, apart from Morelos Horamus. It's just about as bad as any I've ever seen. You wonder what part the one-on-one -on -one miss he had just before Edward scored had on him. Maybe it got into his head. How he recovers from it psychologically will be fascinating. The difficulty is going back into the building. You know people remember the chance as the one that could have got them a draw. What a difference that would have made in terms of atmosphere and confidence. A 3-3 draw would have kept their hopes of the title flickering. For me, that's the league done now. Celtic's next four games are against teams in the bottom six and the matches are fast running out. Rangers' best hope is to try and stop Celtic winning the treble for the second successive year. That's got to be their motivation now, one they'd be advised to keep within their own dressing room. I'm not sure why Neil McCann was so upset with one of the St. Johnston staff in the first place on Saturday. But it's really ugly scene, and I don't think for one minute he'll look back on the pictures and think it looks good. I don't think for one minute he's tried to punch Xander Clark but he has tried to make contact. We all know he is a very passionate man, he wants his side to win and they've just been humiliated 4-0 at home by a local rival. But he's got to show more self-control. Or else, how can he demand it from his players? These things don't promote Scottish football in a good light. We also saw ugly scenes the other week at Rugby Park with Neil Lennon. All these managers talk among themselves and know each other. If you aren't happy with someone, 
pick the phone up and talk through your differences. At the business end of the season, though, those emotions are magnified. All games are important but we're now looking at matches that have huge bearings on who makes Europe, the top six, who makes the playoff and who goes down. Everyone is in a battle. It's not just in Scotland, either, where the pressure is telling. Look at Derby manager Gary Rowett's reaction after the draw with Nottingham Forest yesterday in which Tom Huddlestone was sent off. His side are sitting fifth. When you've got that passion to win, sometimes, when things don't go your way, you can flip. I'm not excusing it. But the fact it's such a passionate game is why we all love it. If I was Dylan McGouch and I wasn't called into the Scotland squad today on the back of my current form, I'd be bitterly disappointed. He's been one of the standouts in the Premiership lately, his control of the game, his awareness and his ability to keep it simple. Without Dylan in that role, I don't think John McGinn or Scott Allen would be half as good as they are at the moment. He gives them a reassurance. He's one of those players who rarely gives the ball away, seldom makes fouls yet is always in the game. He's matured into a very tidy player who isn't fussed about making the killer pass these days but who keeps his team in possession. I've known him for a long time and this is the best he's ever played. I remember he played for Celtic against Real Madrid in Philadelphia in 2012. He was up against Fabio Coentra that day and was unbelievable until he had to go off with a broken jaw. He then had a lot of injuries at the time when other people's careers were taking off. Some people have to go backwards to move forwards and that's exactly what's happened. It will be interesting to see what happens in the summer as his contract is up. There will definitely be interested in him as he's playing that well.